Hello everyone, I'm Dale, a developer relations engineer on Google Maps Platform. Last year at I.O., we launched 3D Maps in the Maps JavaScript API, marking the first time we combined Google's high-fidelity, photorealistic 3D Maps with our rendering technology. We've been amazed with what you've made. Today, we're excited to share with you a significant leap forward for mobile mapping. For the first time ever, we are making Google's photorealistic 3D maps available to you, our Android developers, with Google Maps Platform. This immersive visual experience lets users engage with the world in a completely new way. They can explore everything from soaring city skylines to breathtaking canyons, and even discover hidden gyms in new neighborhoods, all in stunning detail with incredible realism. So, are you ready to add another dimension to your mobile mapping apps? Let's dive in and see how it works. This overview video is geared towards developers who already have some experience with Android development. If you're brand new to Android development, don't worry. We've included links in the description of this video to resources that will help you get up to speed. As with our other Google Maps platform offerings, you will need a Google Maps API key with the Maps 3D SDK for Android API enabled. Please refer to the linked documentation for detailed instructions on how to obtain an API key and ensure the correct APIs are enabled. Be sure to complete this step prior to exploring the samples and building your own 3D Maps experiences. The main component in the Maps 3D SDK is the Map 3D View. If you are already familiar with the Map View in the Google Map Android SDK, you'll find the Map 3D View conceptually similar. It serves as the primary Android view that will host and render the 3D map within your application's layout. If you haven't used MapView before, don't worry. We'll explain the essential aspects as we go. To add a 3D map to your app, you'll integrate the Maps 3D view into your layout XML file. Here's an example. As you can see in this XML sample, the Map 3D view has several custom attributes prefixed with the Map 3D namespace. Let's start with the mode attribute. This attribute allows you to configure how the base layer will be rendered. You can choose either hybrid, which displays 3D imagery with base map roads, labels, and points of interest, or satellite, which displays only the 3D imagery. You can also change the map mode programmatically after the view has been created using the set map mode function. The next set of map 3D attributes control the initial camera location and orientation and set any camera restrictions. We will dive into the details of the camera model and camera restrictions in just a moment. Once you have added the Map 3D view to your layout XML file, you can embed it within your application's user interface using a standard Android layout. For instance, you can place the Map 3D view within a linear layout, a frame layout, or any other layout container that suits your app's design. To bring the Map 3D view to life in your activity, you'll need to inflate your layout and get a reference to the Map 3D view in your code. Here is a minimal example of the main activity that demonstrates this. First, we'll inflate our view using the setContentView method. Then, we'll retrieve our Map 3D view object using the identifier we assigned it in the XML file. Next, we'll create or restore the state of the underlying Map view controller. And finally, we'll register the activity as a listener for when the map is ready. The onMap3DViewReady method of the onMap3DViewReady callback interface will be called once the Map3DView has been successfully initiated and the Google Map3D object is ready for you to use. This object provides the means to control and manipulate the 3D map, including setting the camera, adding markers and models, and much more. And that's the fundamental process of embedding a 3D Google Map into your Android application using the Map 3D view. Your users can now experience the world in stunning 3D within your app, and they're able to engage with the 3D map through the built-in intuitive gestures for panning, tilting, and zooming in and out. I do want to acknowledge that while the SDK's Map 3D view is a view component, it is compatible with Jetpack Compose. In fact, these 3D maps Android demos and the sample app were all built using Compose. Take a look at the source for practical strategies for integrating Map3D View into Compose-based UIs. This means 
you can effectively use the 3D maps capabilities within your composed applications. As we move into the realm of 3D mapping, it shouldn't come as a surprise that we'll need to add a third dimension to the traditional latitude and longitude coordinate class. This is where the lat-long altitude class comes into play. Let's see how you can instantiate a lat-long altitude class in Kotlin. This class represents a location by combining the latitude and longitude coordinates with an altitude. Note that we specifically use altitude because these lat-long altitude instances are not bound to the Earth's surface. This flexibility is essential for positioning markers and models and defining the camera's location in 3D space. Now that we can specify locations in three dimensions, let's use that to build our camera model. We'll start by supplying a center. This tells our camera where to focus. Additionally, we'll need to specify how the point is to be observed. The heading indicates the direction the camera will point, measured in degrees, clockwise from north. With north corresponding to 0 degrees, east to 90 degrees, south to 180 degrees, and west to 270 degrees. The tilt specifies the angle of the camera with respect to the vertical axis in degrees. A tilt of 0 degrees means the camera is pointing straight down towards the Earth, while a tilt of 90 degrees means the camera is pointing horizontally in the direction specified by the heading. The range defines the distance in meters between the camera's position and the center point. The range can vary from 0 up to 360 million meters, allowing for views from very close up to all the way to a truly global perspective. The roll allows you to set the angle with respect to the horizon. This parameter can be used to create effects like banking during a flight simulator or even a full barrel roll. With our camera in hand, we can call the set camera method on the Google Map 3D instance to reposition the camera. You can use camera restrictions to set boundaries on how the user can manipulate the camera, preventing them from wandering off into irrelevant parts of the globe. You can also apply the minimum and maximum for the heading, tilt, and range. You can also define a boundary for the range, the latitude, and longitude. The Maps 3D SDK includes two built-in camera animations, Fly To and Fly Around. The Fly To method smoothly moves the camera from its current position to a specified destination over a given duration. It is analogous to the animate camera call in the 2D Maps SDK. The fly around animation causes the camera to orbit the specified center point at the given tilt and range. You must also specify the number of rotations the camera should make and the total duration the animation should take. You can stop any in-progress animation by calling Stop Camera Animation. Markers are essential for highlighting locations of interest on your 3D map. To add a marker, you'll use the Marker Options class to define its properties, and then call the Add Marker method on your Google Maps 3D instance. Additionally, markers need to specify their altitude mode. This tells the engine how to interpret the altitude parameter of the marker's position. This includes the following options. Absolute. The altitude is used as the marker's absolute position in meters above sea level. Clamp to ground. The altitude is ignored and the marker is placed at the elevation of the ground at the given location. Relative to ground. The altitude is the number of meters between the marker and the ground. And relative to mesh. This mode positions the marker relative to the height of the 3D mesh at its coordinates. This is particularly relevant when your 3D scene contains detailed models like buildings, and you want to place a marker at a specific height relative to those structures. For example, this screen shows a marker at 1 meter relative to the 3D mesh. When adding a marker, each marker is associated with a unique ID. You have the flexibility to either explicitly specify an ID when creating your marker objects object or, if you don't provide one, the SDK will automatically assign a unique ID. The ID is important if you need to manipulate a specific marker after it has been added to the map. To do this, you can call the addMarker method again with a new marker options. 
with the same ID as an existing marker. Instead of creating a new marker, the SDK will update the properties of the existing marker with the values provided in the new marker options. Additionally, the marker object returned by the call add marker is the only way to remove the marker from the map. Take a look at the sample code for a detailed example. Beyond markers, 3D Maps allows you to enrich your 3D scenes by adding full 3D models. Unlike markers, which are typically 2D icons anchored to a specific point, models are full, three-dimensional objects that can represent a wide variety of real-world or fictional entities. You can add a 3D model to the map using the Model Options class and the Add Model method. In addition to the position, you will have to specify the orientation and the scale of the model. The same ID rules apply for manipulating and removing models from the map. The Maps 3D SDK also provides methods for drawing vector graphics on your 3D maps using polygons and polylines. These elements can be invaluable for highlighting specific areas, defining routes, or conveying spatial information to your users. Polygons are closed, filled shapes with the ability to add one or more holes inside the polygon. Polylines are not closed and do not support holes. In this session, we've taken a deep dive into the new Google Maps 3D SDK for Android, showing you how to bring a whole new dimension to your Maps applications. We've covered the fundamental building blocks, including the Map 3D View, the Lat Long Altitude class, and the Camera class. You've seen how to position the camera and to limit the camera to views relevant to your application. And lastly, we've seen how to add markers, models, and vector graphics to our maps. The Google Maps 3D SDK is now available in Experimental. And we are incredibly excited to see the innovative and immersive experiences you will create. We encourage you to dive into the documentation, explore the sample code, and start building the next generation of location-aware 3D apps today. We can't wait to see what you'll build.